it's option day or Monday, as some would call it. We're bringing it back to the basics. So if you're new to options, feel free to watch a video a few times if you want to fully understand what options are, how they work, and you know other things like that. But by no means is this any investment advice because I'm not a professional. Just some examples, so you know you can check out how to do options with Robinhood. We're doing this for Robinhood again because. I think it's probably one of the biggest platforms out there and it's super easy to trade Robinhood. So hopefully you can get a bit of information about how options work out of this video. It'll be the platform we get into in future videos as well. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jacob Fisher and today we're talking options, but the option basics so we can get a good understanding of how options work. This might be a long one. So let's get into this video quickly after we give that like button a little tap and subscribe if you think you want to see future videos from me or future videos on topics like these. Let's talk calls and puts first. The very fundamentals of options. An option is something special. It gives you the right to buy or sell 100 shares of a stock at a predetermined price point or strike price. There's been a lot of long-winded answers out there to answer what an option is, but it's really quite simple. If you're buying a call option, then you get the right to buy 100 shares of an underlying security at a specific strike price. Essentially, you think the underlying stock will go up to 150 by July, then you purchase the 125 calls for a premium, which gives you the right to exercise your option and purchase those 100 shares, because an option is worth 100 shares, at 125 on or before your expiration date. If you're buying a put option, then you get the right to sell 100 shares of an underlying security at a specific strike price on or before expiration date. If you wanted to be a seller of puts and calls, then you can do that if you want to. So if you want to be a seller selling a call, that obligates you to sell 100 shares of a stock at an underlying price while selling a put obligates you to buy 100 shares of a stock at an underlying price. You can sell those contracts to receive a premium which is what you purchase them for too. So you can either buy the contract and spend money or sell the contract and receive money. In even more simpler terms, you buy calls if you think the stock will go up by a certain day, or if you're bullish, you buy puts if you think the stock will go down by a certain day or bearish. Selling options allows you to generate income, as I mentioned before, because if the buyer of the option doesn't exercise his position, then you get to keep that premium that they have paid you. Selling a call means you think the stock might not do anything or go down so you can keep that premium. Selling a put means you think the stock might not do anything again or go up so you can keep the premium. It's kind of the opposite. So buying a call, you're bullish. Selling a call, you're bearish. And same goes for puts, except buying a put is bearish versus selling a put is bullish. Next, we can move into in the money, out of the money, and at the money. Pretty simple to understand these, I promise. In the money for calls means the underlying securities price is below your option strike price. A 90 call for AMD would be in the money right now because AMD is at 92 per share. A put is the opposite. An in the money put means your underlying securities price is lower than your option strike price. At the money calls and puts, at the money that is, both mean your strike price is equal to the current price of the underlying security. It's at the money. Out of the money is pretty much just the opposite of in the money. So out of the money calls, we have the underlying securities price is above the options strike price. Out of the money puts are when the underlying securities price is below the options strike price. Robinhood makes this really easy to understand because they put the current strike price as a little bar in the center. So you can see, you know, if you're looking at calls, then all the ones above it will be out of the money versus the ones below it will be in the money. You can use options in three ways. They're all pretty easy to understand. The first one is income generating. So you can generate some income with that. If you want to be the seller of the options and you can check out videos of mine up in the corner, like the wheel method, that's a great way to generate some income on stocks that you might be bullish on or just want to use to generate some income. You're pretty much just trying to earn that premium and never have to sell or buy shares. You're just hoping to gain that premium and hoping the option you sold expires worthless. Number two is hedging. If you have a portfolio, but you want to be protected below certain drops, then you can pretty much use options to buy puts and protect your portfolio 
since puts give you the right to sell 100 shares of a stock at a set price. If the market drops below that, you're pretty much covered because you're still to gain money in the options below that price point. So you could protect your portfolio against like a 5% drop or even more if you wanted to. Again, another video for that that goes further into detail. Then finally, we have speculative plays. Now this is where Wall Street Bets kind of got its name and options get their famous attention for 1000% gains in a day or uh, you know, 10,000% gains over years or whatever people like to do. Due to a number of factors though, which we'll be getting into in just a moment, and the fact that you can just buy and sell the option, so you don't need to actually buy and sell the underlying security, you can just do it with the option. You can make a lot of money with option trading. Before we get into the Greeks and what kind of affects the price of an option, we need to talk about implied volatility. It's calculated on some advanced formula, but we can kind of ignore that, you know, we don't need to know the exact mathematic reasoning for that. Essentially, it means how much a stock is likely to move in a given amount of time. More volatile stocks like Tesla and I assume GameStop <laughs> will have higher IVs because they are more volatile compared to JP Morgan, for example, or Apple isn't that volatile. The tricky bit is that each option can have a different IV. So Tesla with earnings this week, at the end of the week, we'll have a higher IV in some cases than the ones expiring two weeks from now because earnings will be done and over. So the earnings IV will be higher than the one further away. Now let's get into the Greeks because I think when people think of options, they look at the Greeks and they're like, well, I don't even know what that means, but they're really not that complicated. They're pretty easy to understand. We have Delta, Gamma, Theta, and Vega, which sound like physics things, but you know, they're actually for options too. <laughs> let's start with Delta. This is how much the price of an option is expected to change for every dollar move in the underlying security. Calls have a positive delta, while puts have a negative delta because for every dollar move of the underlying security, the put value goes down. So if the you know stock goes up, the put value goes down, which makes it negative. Delta can have a maximum value of one when the option is in the money. That means if you own calls in the money, for every dollar increase of the underlying, your contract should increase by $100 in value. Because again, option contracts are 100 shares. Moving into gamma, which affects delta. Gamma is the change in delta for every dollar change in the underlying security. If you remember high school trig, think of delta like an asymptote that approaches one and actually does hit one. But as a line approaches that one, the slope of that line increases dramatically as the stock approaches in the money. Delta increases significantly more because gamma is just getting bigger and bigger. Next is theta, which is the change in option price for every one day closer to the expiration date. Theta increases as the option gets closer to expiration date. This is where theta can burn you and you've heard the term theta burn. Because if you choose to purchase same day expiration options, since time is so close to expiration, you really only have like eight hours of the stock market being open every hour, that option can decrease more and more in value if the stock is not moving very much because theta would decay the option value. Then we have Vega, which is how implied volatility affects the price of an option, the higher the IV, generally the higher in price the option will be. After earnings, you can experience an IV crush because the implied volatility could drop significantly after earnings, but will be rising up up until that earnings date. It also depends on how well the stock beats earnings. And then finally, we have Rho, which just measures the option sensitivity to interest rates. Not really worth it to get into this one because, you know, we can't really control that. These can help you measure option prices since in the money options with a delta of one should increase by one for every dollar of the underlying security. The 80 calls for AMD when AMD is trading at 90 should be worth at the minimum $10 per contract or 90 minus 80 because that's what Delta tells us it should be. Let's run through a quick example on Robinhood where I will show you how easy it is you can do on Robinhood to buy and sell calls or puts in that example and options really just in general. So you find your stock, you click trade and then click trade options. Robinhood gives you a discover tab, which a lot of people generally ignore, but if you have a specific date in mind, you, you can just ignore that again. So click the specific date you're considering, January 22nd, let's take a look at that one. And you think AMD is gonna close at 95. So you want to buy the 95 strike price calls. You can do so for $170 total. 
Robinhood gives you the break even price so you know at expiration, if AMD is not at 96, 70 or above, then you will have lost money. That's the price of the option plus the premium price that you paid. If AMD closes at 100 at expiration, which is pretty good, then your option would be worth uh, at expiration would be 100 minus 95 or $5. They also show you the bid and ask and the bid is the current price someone is trying to buy that option, that specific option at, while the ask is what the price someone is trying to sell an option at. The bid ask spread is the difference between the two numbers, the bid and ask, and with more liquid options with ones with more overall volume, you're going to get a much tighter spread than an illiquid option. And illiquid, illiquid options are harder to trade since they might have whole dollar differences in prices. It's just complicated to get a price in there because you could put it in the middle of the bid and ask spread and you still might not get filled for your order because someone might just not sell it to you. Let me know your thoughts on options below and if this, you know, kind of explain it very well. I upload videos on Monday and Friday now. It used to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but we're changing it up a little bit on travel and finance. So if that sounds like something interesting to you, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down there. Thank you so much for watching and until next time.